I'm Dylan Boyden. I'm Ryan Betson. Tear your tickets, take your seats, it's time for popcorn. The sessions kick off every Friday morning at 9am on YouTube and all podcast services. If you want to join that sweet movie conversation, head over to facebook.com slash groups slash the pop culturist. And there's also the Discord group, which is in the link in the description, as well as all our other social medias. But if you really like what we do, you can head over to patreon.com slash the pop culturist. Maybe a tear there that interests you. Yes. Hey, man. Maybe there is. Hello, sir. Hey, why are you, sir? Have you been watching trailers lately? I have, man. There's been nothing but trailers. Nothing but trailers. It's trailer time. You know what one trailer is that came out on Friday the 13th, no less, right around Halloween? Oh, crap, yeah. Surprisingly, actually. So there's a new X-Men movie, quote unquote. See, when you told me this, I was like, what? I I feel I should have known this. Yeah, me too. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I knew Whisperings. I, I did hear a lot of news about Maisie Williams being in the uh, a New Mutants movie. Yeah, which is weird because we've already got Sansa. Yeah, Sansa. So now Stark. we've got Arya. Tyrion Lannister was in Days of Future Past. Holy shit, that is hard. They're straight up getting the Game of Thrones people. Um, so essentially what we're looking at is the New Mutants. Mm. Can you give me a quick rundown of New Mutants? Because Mar- okay. Marvel is not my forte. So the X-Men were a big thing uh-huh. in the 60s, created by Stan Lee. Um, and then towards the 80s, it kind of got a reboot and they had giant size X-Men issue one where they brought in some more multicultural characters. Mm. So they brought in Canadian Wolverine, African Storm, uh, Russian Colossus, German Nightcrawler and gave it a bit of diversity. Um, so that was a massive thing. Chris Claremont was the writer at the time and he wrote a lot of the big story arcs, Days of Future Past, Dark Phoenix Saga, the ones that all the movies try to be based on the, the best of the best Black Phoenix Take 2 coming up yeah and they were like we need more we need more of these titles we need more mutant titles yeah. so they're like we want to do the same thing we want multiculturalism mm-hmm. but we want some new mutants so he's like okay here's the new mutants here's the actual new mutants so essentially it's Professor X schooling younger students okay and I think essentially the idea was rather than these being trained to kind of go out and fight as X-Men mm-hmm. they were more just students in a school and you teach them how to deal with their powers okay um, so it takes away some of the big stuff yeah and their, their powers were more now this is the weird thing I, say, I, saw, I mean big like events and stuff no they don't go like massive adventures yeah. but it's more like grounded into personal stories and they had a lot of more mystical kind of powers like dealing with sorcery and okay. the demons and werewolves and things like would that would it be in the same vein of like Justice League Dark no, I don't think so what the cause fuck is up with my glasses the most surprising thing of this trailer was that it's a straight up horror movie see that's what that's what I was trying to go yeah my segues. that's what you say straight up um, but essentially like there were so many spin-offs the New Mutants and then they had X-Factor and then they had X-Force and then they've got X-Factor. Excalibur yeah. not not, not, not based on the TV show? That we, no, well no. before that. But essentially, there's so many spin-offs of the X-Men characters, and I believe this was the first kind of one they attempted. Mm. So, yeah. Um, essentially, what's really interesting is this movie is taking that route. I watched it and I'm like, okay, there's a New Mutants movie. It was on the kind of list of like, you know, like Gotham Sirens is going to get oh, made, the, the slate the of Harley things. Kin one. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, that's never going to happen. Yeah. It's like way down the bottom of the list of things. So you got like Deadpool... Deadpool 2, then they're going to do an X Force movie, and essentially. Yeah, with Cable, because he's going to come up in, Dead, in Deadpool 2. That's right, then, Josh yeah. Brolin's Cable. And most of the characters, the New Mutants, once the New Mutants comic ended, moved into the X Force. Mm-hmm. And the X Force was more of the military kind of side of the X Men. So Cable led them, and all most of the characters that are in the New Mutants graduated to X Force with the addition of Domino, who's in Deadpool 2. Mm-hmm. Um, Boom Boom, which was like this like um, bubblegum eaten short haired blonde bombshell um, and Wolfsbane who was like this oh not Wolfsbane it was feral mm. she was like this kind of like beast looking girl um, so that's what I'm familiar with X-Force in the early 90s when I was reading the X-Men comics there was X-Force mm-hmm. but then it was like there's X- Uncanny X-Men X-Men X-Factor Thanks for us. And like it was really down the tier of like popularity like in, the, in the yeah in the terms of hierarchy of X Men. Yeah, so you're getting like down to Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant Man. You know, like yeah. it's at that tier. Um, but I think what's really interesting about it is that they've taken this angle. Yeah, so like I not not having any idea about a this movie existing or b that like what New Mutants are. So when you said hey, it's a New Mutants trailer, and I pulled it up to watch it before we came in here, and I was like, I. Is this one of those fake 
<laughs> is this a fan film? Like, this is this a fan film? It's like this time I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to take New Mutants. Because like, I didn't watch it on the 20th Century Fox YouTube channel or some other fucking mm. random channel. I'm like, I have a reason. I have reason to believe that this isn't a real movie. And then I did some Googleizing. It's like, huh. This may in fact be a real movie. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Maisie Williams in it. So I yeah. Guess I'm like, is it? Because I'm like, Maisie where I'm like, okay. Well, I guess. And then they showed it with like dyed hair i'm like well i haven't i don't know if she's been in anything with dyed hair so it's not for, pulled from another trailer or another mm. movie i'm like okay, maybe there's some legitimacy mm. to this but like i really took interest to it because when you tell me it's an x-men movie yeah i know what my i i know what to expect mm. but this did not have any of my predetermined expectations hey well played well done excellent uh, yeah, yeah well, hey, come cool. on, I'll give you that one. Um, yeah, I had no like when I watched this, I'm like, what the fuck? Like it's it, and they had sort of like you know that black with the white scratches, yeah, and there's like the, right. like very Blair Witchy yeah. sort of vibe yeah. going on, and some weird face creature. That, yeah. I don't know what the fuck this is, but I'm I kind of want to see it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Like Josh Boone is the director, and What's he done. He did the Fault in Our Stars. Very, oh, that was, that was a very, very not genre. S- good s- in terms of same. Yeah. Good no, film, though. Very popular, uh, well loved. Uh, yeah, a very heart wrenching drama. Yeah. I'm not um, going to watch it because I'll probably cry. But uh, what, listening to him talk about it, um, he's saying that it's kind of Breakfast Club crossed with Nightmare on Elm Street 3 The Dream Warriors crossed with uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, so what I think in that sense is I think it's very contained into the asylum that they're in. Yeah, okay. Um, and Which is cool. It keeps with the comics. Very soft, you know, as in like not big world, well, not, yeah. you know, things. And I think uh, James McAvoy is going to be in it in com- some capacity as Professor X. Okay. Um, but I think it's kind of like maybe, because in the opening of the movie or the trailer, it says, do you know what a mutant is? Mm. So maybe it starts in the sense that they're not familiar with what mutants are and any of these powers would seem demonic or that's what I'm saying it's like, like, well, that's what I'm saying I'm saying in my head um, like that's what I was thinking I was thinking like yeah they must be in this asylum for their mutant abilities because like mm. these people they think these people are fucking insane especially if you said it's all mystic right mm. or it's being predominantly mystic in the comics mm, maybe. sorcery and things yeah. yeah so like the um well, let's go through the characters. Let's have a oh, look. Oh, so you don't actually know who the characters are that they're playing and that's been listed somewhere? Yeah, well, there's only like two people who are known. So Maisie Williams mm-hmm. uh, plays Wolf Spain. So Wolf Spain is Scottish oh, and oh, she can shift into Lupin form. Do you say Lupine or Lupine? Lupin. Oh, I guess it's Lupin like Harry Potter, right? That's what I think. Werewolf form, let's just say that. So yeah. she can turn into like a dog or like look hairy. And that's why I thought she was feral because I like saw the character and they look almost identical. Mm. But then Beast and Wolverine kind of look the same anyway. That's true. Anyway. Uh, so Maisie Williams. Then you got Anna Anya Taylor-Joy. So she plays Magic. So she's the one in the trailer that has the bowl cut blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the funny thing was... What's she been in? Uh, Split that we were talking about the other day. The oh, the one that I keep getting confused with Nerve. Yeah, which is very similar to this. Every time and I walk, every time I walk past like the JB Huff, I'm like, "Oh no, that's the one." Wait, no, that's the one I got told not to watch. Is, is, that the is Dave, it the Dave Franco one? I like that one as well. That's no, cool. no, because I think you told me. I think you told me Nerve was poops. That Nerve's good. Oh, well, it's like it's poops, but it's good poops. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she was in that that with James McAvoy, who's yeah. Professor X, of course, um, playing that kind of looks like a similar kind of situation. So she's an up and coming actress. Okay. Uh, good, and then, good in Split? Yeah, she was really good in Split. And I think she was in a horror movie called The Witch, which got a lot of great reviews okay. for her performance. Um, so, yeah, so she plays Magic, who is Russian, and her power is she's a time-space teleporter, and she dabbles in sorcery. Dabbles in crochet. Uh, and then there's some other characters that are played by nobodies. There's Cannonball, who's American. He can rocket through the air and has invincibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's in uh, X-Force. You see the broken arm guy in the trailer? Yeah, I think so. So that's the guy that we oh. think from Stranger Things. He's yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah. him. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Mirage is Native American and she can create illusions based on your greatest fear or your greatest wishes. Okay, cool. So again, that plays into the horror element. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Sunspot is Brazilian and he can gain strength with soul energy. Ooh. So well, the, judging by what the trailer is and what you've told me, yeah. is it going to be some sort of like in my head... Once again, being very cynical about superhero movies. I'm like, mm. are they going to do... Like, is it going to be like Enchantress and this whole spooky business is all her? 
Well, it could very well be. I think because the guy's in the, the washing machine, mm. that could be Sunspot using solar energy, or mm. it could be Cannibal doing his fire thing. Um, but a lot of the characters, like the X-Men fuck shit up constantly, is most of these characters have kind of appeared in the other movies in shitty roles. Side so in Days of Future Past, where they're in the future and they're fighting the Sentinels... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Sunspot was there, and there was also, uh, I think, Warpath, who's one of the X Force characters. Like, just like, see, that's him. Like, you want, you want, uh, you want Sunspot? You want Cannibal? There they are, that fucking model in the background. It used his powers once. That's him. Be happy. <laughs> and then eventually they decide to actually flesh it out, and make it a character, and they and cast it, someone different. Yeah, and then they just fuck their continuity up the ass. So that's pretty graphic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's that's exciting though. I like that they're taking risks. Like 20th Century Fox did Logan, mm. which was completely different. And fucking fantastic. Deadpool, which is completely different. Fucking fantastic. It feels like they're kind of doing the what DC want to do and kind of doing these the else worlds, what if kind movies, of things. Yeah. And just saying, we're going to do this genre with this one. We're going to change it up, be different. We've got this X-Men franchise. We're still doing that. But then we're taking risks mm. uh, with lower budget things. This looks very low budget. It does, like noticeably low. Like, cause, like out, even like the special, quote unquote, special effects that were in that. Mm. It was a, it was a, an actual fire mm. in a washing machine. Mm. People pushing that, through plastic. Yeah, and that's that, like that felt wall when people kind of mm. like mm. nothing in it seemed high budget CG. Yeah, and which will add, which will add a lot to the horror element of it if it's a bit more grounded. Mm. And that's what I like. So that's what I loved about like the Conjuring was like mm. there were, a lot of the special effects were grounded or to ma- made to look super grounded. Yeah, as soon as like with it where it's like CGI, it just takes yeah. you out of it. Mm. Um, Especially now we're in, we're in the like, the 4K era yeah. where you can clearly <laughs> notice CG now. Yeah, even the best of CG doesn't hold up very well. Not yet. But if it weren't for the actors, the couple of actors you see that are in it, you'd be kind of like, this looks like straight to DVD. Yeah. I mean, from what you've seen, it's like, very little. You know, the thing that was that I know what you did like eight summers ago. Like yeah, the like four, I the- still remember what you did that summer or something. Yeah. And it's like the fourth sequel. Um, but I'm optimistic. It's an interesting... The other thing they said was that it's a trilogy, of course. They oh, always. It's a trilogy. Always. Um, and so you'll probably see them graduating to teaming up with Deadpool or Cable coming into mm-hmm. it. Um, but he said each movie is a different genre of horror movie. Ooh. out of the three so that could be awesome this is like the mental asylum kind of one see it's funny like I always think about I'm like oh man I love horror movies but then I always watch them I'm like oh, I regret my decision like every time <laughs> what do you regret though <laughs> just being in that room watching that movie <laughs> <laughs> I'm like as I get scared I'm like oh the fuck are like oh, so Conjuring I'm like Conjuring looks fucking dope because to me that's like my, one of my pinnacles of fucking horror yeah so I'm like this is cool and then I'm the chair I'm like oh, why why do I do this? It's not coming out. <laughs> yeah, and then every, I'm uh, leaving on the car park. Oh. Yeah, and then you live that that night where you're like checking under your bed, and, and you, you like, can hear like, scratches s- in the hall. Everything has lights on. Yep, yep, everything's heightened. But yeah, it's weird to say that I'm in. Ex- uh, I'm excited for a, a X Men movie, and I think depending on where you're looking, but it's the New Mutants. But a lot of people are calling it X Men hyphen the New Mutants colon. Yeah. I think it would vary on where it's going to be released, I think. Yeah. But it is going to be released in Australia on the 12th of April next year. So not, not long to wait. Not long at all. It's like six months. Speaking of also not long to wait, Black Panther. <gasps> that also came out this week. Another trailer that was like, hey, it's Black Panther. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's here. Yeah. So Black Panther stars uh, Chadwick Boseman returning. As I was going to say, like, I, this is going to sound horrible. I thought, I thought it was the shared side. Uh, but no, he was in uh, Doc Strange, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. was uh, Baron Mordo. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, Chadwick Boseman from Captain Rex of War. We got yes. a taste of uh, Black Panther doing Black Panther things. Uh, his father died in that one. And it seems to this one continue on. So he's returning from his adventures out, outside so of the world. So where he's king now. Yeah. So I think this movie deals with him becoming the king and the kind of king that differs from what his father was like and what he's like. Mm. And um, essentially, he lives in the land of Wakanda, which is like a hidden. Uh, civilization within Africa that is sort of being because it's been sort of self-contained and left to grow mm. it seems to be noticeably ahead of the rest of the world yeah big technology advancements and uh, they've got the minerals of vibranium there so it's like the strongest metal on earth Captain Rock Shield's made of it of course and the Black Panther suit's made of it so they're kind of hoarding this vibranium that's what Ultron was trying to make his mm. suit out of in um, Age of Ultron Uh, but yeah, so this one is directed <laughs> by Ryan Coogler. 
So well, the Cougs. The Cougs did Creed. Yeah. And uh, which, which was well loved. Yeah. And Fruitful Station, which they've renamed Creed the Rocky Legends Saga or something like that. That's now renamed. So uh, the next one will be like whatever the Rocky something something. Dylan. Yeah. The Rocky Saga. I like Creed. That was cool. Now they changed it. Uh, but yeah, Ryan Coogler did Fruitful Station, which is highly regarded with Michael B. Jordan in it. And then uh, also from, did- from a much worse. Uh, Superhero movie, Fantastic Four. That is true. And ironically, the the Black Panther first appeared in Fantastic Four. Oh, bam. And he fought Chris Evans' Human Torch uh-huh. in Captain America Civil War. And now he's fighting Michael B. Jordan. He was also Human, Human Torch. Torch. Yeah, in this one. So, he goes around. It's all coming together. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of which, so uh, Angela Bassett's in it. She plays uh, Black Panther's stepmother. That's, is it the white hat chick? Yes. Okay. And she uh, she would be the best Storm. They should have used her as Storm in the yeah. X-Men movies. Halle Berry. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker's in it. He's not in the trailer. I but do like Forrest he's Whitaker. There. He's uh, getting around. Yeah, he's coming back out of nowhere. Yeah. Rogue One and... There was something else in it. He was in something else recently Maybe too. He, just, he just killed it in uh, Rogue One that was memorable. Yeah, and we're like, man, Forrest Whitaker's everywhere. He's like, no, he's done one movie yeah. in the last he 10 years. He wasn't in it much either, but you really remember him just being weird. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so out of place. <laughs> yes. Lapita Nyong'o. From That's uh, the Twelve Years a Slave. Yeah, I was gonna say Be- Beast of the Southern Wild as well. Was that her? Possibly. Potentially. No, no that was a younger girl. I she think. wasn't that movie that I cannot think of the title. I could Google it in two seconds, but I'm not going to do mm. it. Was it another Oscar movie? No, it was the Liam Neeson one where he's on a plane and he like floats in the air and shoots. What the fuck are you talking? It's good. About? It's a pretty good movie. He's texting people and stuff. It's good. It's <laughs> he's texting. He, and he's he does. He texts people. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Andy Circus returns as Ulysses Claw. I was gonna say because when we're watching, I'm like Ulysses. That's a dumb name. That can't be the right name. No, it totally is. Mm. And he lost his arm from Ultron. He's got himself a, a prosthetic Robert fake arm, arm with like, nee, which is really creepy to look at. It's like bleh, and it splits right down here, and it's like, and then shit comes out of it. And yeah, that's what they said. But I watched it just on the big screen because I was watching on like a tiny phone. Yeah. It looked like it came out of there, and I'm like, mm, people are saying it's splitting. Yeah, if you zoom in on it, you can literally see it split and it split and drops. Ooh, well, there you go. And Martin Freeman is back as uh, Ross Everett Ross. Ross. He's just like some like clerk dude who's like, hey, I saw government gods man, gods fly and aliens fall from the sky. Now, what's interesting about this is I expected like this awesome Lion King looking movie, like out in the plains of Africa very grounded and I know that Black Panther has like advanced technology and things like that involved in his story but when Guardians of the Galaxy came out it was so visually different had these bright colours and so different to the kind of palette of normal real world in the MCU mm. and then Thor Ragnarok trailer came out and it looks similar to Guardians but it's kind of out in that area of the galaxy so I'm like that's cool like those kind of match and it's kind of building towards Infinity War which I'm sure will be out in space and look more like that so they're getting you used to it but then this looks like he's fighting like there's a scene where they're fighting in some purple area and the train thing goes it looks past. like Tron yeah it looks like Tron crossed with like the, the rainbow bridge in Thor and mixed um, with some slums from Civil War yeah and then like some Blade Runner sets that are like in the daytime desert it looks very oh and then he like gets that. like what looks to be some psychedelics and hangs out in tree with some panthers. Yeah, he's got out in the purple jungles. But it, it just feels very, to me, it just, I don't know, like um, Ryan Coogler said that he wanted to do it differently. He wanted to get his cinematographer, his producers, mm-hmm. to make it like look different from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think he did, and then Marvel have gone, Yeah, maybe. Well, look, get the people you want. Cool. Now do this. Yeah, now we're just going to fix it in post. Um, but yeah, it feels like there was the chase scene in Captain America Civil War where he's on the cars and stuff. Yeah. And then in this one, he's jumping on cars. Like, you could do anything in the world. Why are you doing the same thing again? And he's just doing flips from the cars again. And as, as I said to you before, like, I was, you know, it kind of, which I was, I was watching another YouTube video that sort of broke it down. And it was like, it looks like the floaty CG of Daredevil with Ben Affleck. Mm. And I was like, holy fuck does. Yeah, like when Colin like, Farrell's on the motorbike. Like, unnecessary, like, And he, like, steps over there. him. Yeah. So there's some cool things in there, like, uh, you see him transform, the suit transforms around him. But then again, it looks very like Iron Man. You've seen yeah, that. and then you go, then you've got Michael B. Jordan. So, in the same vein as uh, Iron Man and Incredible Hulk, it's mm. another, it's the enemy that mirrors you. Mm. It's This is bad Black Panther. Yeah, this is you know, Black Panther ha- with a slightly different color. Yeah, so color. like we have good Black Panther with purple. He likes purple. Mm, purple. And then yeah. we've got yellow Black Panther. 
kind of like Yellow Jacket, but Black Panther. Yeah, and again, Yellow Jacket's the same thing as Ant Man, like a guy that shrinks down. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. He looks cool, like Michael B. Jordan's fit, and he's got those like scars. Yeah, well, like yeah, like, what's things. going on there? That's awesome. Michael B. Jordan looks rad. Yeah, uh, period. Even when he's like, he's got like this like cool hair. Yeah, and then he's in the uh, museum, and he's got looks like Arrested Development early nineties, where he's got glasses. Yeah, this is, I guess that's because I was looking, and, and I'm like, this looks like something, and I couldn't quite pick what it is. Yeah, Arrested Development, you've nailed it. It looks awesome. Um, so there's, there's things that look. I, I imagine it'll be good. They're always good. Mm. Um, but I'm just kind of surprised by like how different it was to what I was anticipating. See, my concern now is we're getting into the weeds of superhero movies. Like Marvel or everywhere? Well, I guess Marvel is probably the biggest one because they've done like 30 fucking movies at this point. This is the 17th. 17th movie. So, 18th, sorry. 18th, so for me, like, you know, uh, Ant-Man as an example, right? I'm like, man, I don't really know who Ant-Man is, but I love Paul Rudd. Mm. So like I had that connection. With this... Outside of Michael B. Jordan looking cool and he was in some good other movies, mm. I have nothing pulling me towards this movie. Mm. Like when New Mutants looked so different to what I expect next minute movie to me, I'm like, yeah, I gotta check it out. But there is nothing about Black Panther that's pulling me in. Mm. And then watching it and I'm seeing hints of other movies, I'm like, I don't know what this is and why I should watch it. I'm just worried that it's the same thing again and again and again. And I'm like, I've seen Black Panther, like running along the side of the wall, I've seen that Spider Man clawing things I saw that in the other movie um, I'm still interested in what it's going to be mm. but you're a big Marvel guy though so you have you know some histories of Black Panther yeah but the good thing about these ones is like Doctor Strange or like you know of Doctor Strange but mm. you don't really know all the nitty gritty so when you get to see the movie same with Guardians of the Galaxy you know of the Guardians of the Galaxy but you don't know the details but to me that was Chris Pratt Bradley Cooper that was the story Vin Diesel yeah. you know, I'm like, well it's good that it's like an all African cast, African American. That part's rad. Uh, that's really awesome. Um, and they were very adamant about getting a, an African American director or an African director. Um, so they pushed for a lot of different people. John Singleton was trying to do it for years. He did um, Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. Um, they tried to get U- Duvernay, Eva, Eva Duvernay, who did um, the Selma movie about Martin Luther King. Oh, fuck, that was a good movie. Um, so they're trying oh, to do I that. So, I cried so hard in that movie. It's a pretty good movie. Um, but that was know, like that was when, when, when the year that came out with all the Oscar movies. That was Josh's number one pick, yeah. as in that was his movie of the of that Oscar that, season. That was a good movie, which is weird because there was like the action movies in there, and Josh was telling me all about the guns. But he's like, no, this movie fucking rocks. I went and saw that movie at cinemas, and then I realized, oh, I'm not going to make it to work on time, so I had to leave three quarters into the movie, get to work just in time, and then I had to go back and watch again later. Was worth watching again. Yeah. He didn't, they didn't do the Selma walk yet I had to get I had to see them walk <laughs> see the you missed the whole Selma part the of whole, Selma the whole point of it yeah um, but I'm, I'm still excited for it I like that it's it's being released in February Feb, yeah. no, I don't know what the date is but no it's Feb 15th of February oh nice 2018 uh, I think that's Black History Month oh cool um, so I like what they're doing there it's the first kind of African American character to have their own movie mm-hmm. aside from Blade um, and it's the first Marvel car movie character, Cypher Blade. Um, and he was what well, he was like probably the first African American superhero. That's hard to blade. No, even before Blade. Well, <laughs> in comic books, like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I'm oh, sorry, I just, I just keep liking that asterisk. Whatever you say, it's like, and the Cypher Blade. Well, no, it's kind of like a Cypher Blade. Yeah, no, I just uh, enjoyed the little asterisk. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited what they're going for. And it's the same thing that they kind of did with um, Wonder Woman, where it was a female director, a female led movie. It was something that was new that you hadn't seen before. Like Blade. Um, like Blade. <laughs> you know what's good? Blade. Blade. Blade is so good. Blade is awesome. Wesley <laughs> Snipes is awesome. Um, and I'm surprised he's not in this. I wanted him to be like the father. Yeah, I'm pretty rad. But he's just going to come back as Blade and be awesome. Okay, it's funny. Um,. Uh, Millie was trying to think of a movie to watch the other day so I was like I don't know Expendables 3 why not and <laughs> Wesley Snipes is in it yeah he got I'm like, a, like prison for tax evasion yeah, and he's like in, in, hey yo come be in the movie yeah and then like and they break him out of like prison yeah, stuff. so he's in a movie like he's in the movie and they're like what'd you get, what'd you get done for tax evasion and I'm like is this on the nose or what yeah did they, are they actually breaking him out is yeah, this the documentary yeah uh, that's awesome but it? I did want to mention before we wrap up mm-hmm. uh, have you seen like They've got so much Thor Ragnarok stuff out at the moment. Did you see one of the trailers where he goes into, you know, the ship that the Hulk flew away in? Yeah, no, I've, I've only seen the last one, which I was like, it's just like Guardians of the Galaxy, and then that was the last one. I was yeah, like, well, I'm saying why because like I'm keen for, for Thor, so I'm saying away. There's lots of humor, obviously, in the mm, other trailers of you've seen. 
Spoilers, I'm just going to tell you what happens at the end. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, so this is, there was just this short 15-second thing, and uh, he goes into the ship that the uh, Hulk flew away in, Banner, and he puts his hand on, like, the scan panel, and it's, like, name recognition or something like that. And he's like, uh, Thor. And it's like, denied. And he's like, uh, God of Thunder. Denied. Uh, strongest Avenger. Denied. Uh, King of, um, like, Prince of... Um, Asgard. Asgard. Denied. And then... Um, David Banner Bruce Banner Bruce David Banner comes in and uh, Mark Ruffalo puts his hands on it and it's like Banner and he's like ah recognize the strongest Avenger <laughs> and I'm just like man this this is just gonna be all out laughs mm. I'm, I don't I'm excited for it I don't mind that it might rub a lot of people the wrong well, way well it's like seeing as like what I loved about Thor 1 was mm. when it was comedic for those little couple of moments because yeah. Chris Hemsworth does have comedic timing he was good he was good in um, the vacation movie where he had like jocks on yeah. and he just sees his dick like fully <laughs> and he's just like walking around the room and the guy's just like like the, his wife's not noticing but he's just like what the fuck <laughs> yeah like I like the parts where he's like I'll have another and he throws yeah. the thing down or the, the, my favourite one I will happily put on repeat it's like a four minute it's like a four second clip yeah. it's where they go to reverse the car and he's behind he's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I again. could repeat that because the de- like the delivery like the face is just <laughs> quality <laughs> physical act like uh, physical comedy yeah it's just because yeah. like the hair and it's just fucking, like he's the god of he's the god yeah. he's a god you're taken out by a Chevy you know it's in, like, in a car park <laughs> reversing yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah oh I love that moment. it looks awesome I'm excited and I think Chris Hemsworth was like getting sick of it and he's like eh, I don't really care anymore so they're doing something different to kind of revitalize it yeah because like he's he, coming to his end because I think you know at I think outside of Incredible Hulk I think Thor was like the lowest rated yeah uh, definitely the second one yeah I like the first one Dark World was poops yeah yeah, oh, didn't do for me at all. Yeah, there's a couple of laughs. Yeah, but uh, yeah. a couple. Of laughs. We'll find out. Thor Ragnarok comes out in just two weeks' time, so we'll, we'll, we'll find we'll out. We'll be reviewing soon. it on this bad boy. We certainly will be. Hell's yeah! But until then, I'm Dylan Bowden. Do we just do the? Do we just ah oh, fuck it? I'm Ryan Betson. Now to the spill. Oh, okay. Uh, sessions every Friday morning, nine a.m. YouTube and all podcast services. If you want to join the movie conversation, head to facebook.com slash group slash the pop culture is where you can uh, chat with us about all the movie things. Uh, and of course, there is a link in the description for the Discord chat where a lot of conversation goes down. You, just, you need to get on that Discord chat, man. You need to get, get in there. Good I don't even know what it is. I'm old. I don't understand things. You, Makes me angry just hearing the word. You know how long You know how long I fought? Like, you should get Discord. I'm like, fuck you. What do we get in Twitter? We have Twitter. We have Twitter for ages. What do we do with it? Just it sits there. Cool. Uh, Jess, Jess uses it now with her social media skills. Right. She makes things happen. I'll try and learn Discord. I don't know what it is. It's like Slack, but with more don't, people. Don't like the sound of it. <laughs> I'm old. Uh, if you like what we do, head over to, head over to patreon.com slash the pop culturist. There may be a tier there that interests you. And that's what you do your thing. Until then, that's a wrap. <laughs>